tall lad, a uh, little baby face, smashes one from about 40 yards and it breaks the goal in half. And I was like, who's that? He was like, that's the beast. From the Liverpool Sunday League to winning Tranmere Rovers Player of the Season in less than a year, Elliot Nevitt is enjoying a meteoric rise. The League of 72 spoke to the man himself and some of those who've been involved in his journey for this episode of Real Stories. Oh, what a ball! What a ball! Up the line! Up the line! Sunday League was my life, to be fair, growing up. Yeah! I was playing Sunday League men's footy since I was about 14 for the same team till I was 24 and I absolutely loved it. But no, it's not for the faint hearted, no. You know, you've got to, have, you've got to, got to have a bit of bias to survive in Liverpool Sunday League. Certainly in my day, coming through on the Merseyside Sunday Leagues was, was a sit of baptism by fire. Playing in the Football League in the 70s was quite easy relative to that. And there were times when there were hundreds of people around the, around the edge of the pitch when you had a really big Sunday League. So it's been always been a very, a very big feature of Merseyside in terms of the Sunday League teams that we put out here. Like when I was young, I wanted to become a pro, but the older I got, I was just playing because I enjoyed playing. And so I was just playing with my mates and um, we had a good team, so we got the recognition that we should have got. Yeah, we won the, won the National Cup twice, league three times, and Elliot's been a major part of that. There was obviously teams aware of, of how good he was and, and, and his goal scoring record, but Elliot uh, was a really grounded lad. He, he was really happy he, he, and he wanted to stay here and it would have took something special like it did for him to move on elsewhere. And something very special indeed was about to happen when Warrington Rylands met Binfield in the final of the FA Vars at Wembley. Well, at first I was a bit nervous and then the ball coming and scored and I was thinking, it's only a game of footy. Like, I do this all the time and then I just started getting more incompetent and then we got the pen and I was like, I'm having this. Like, I'm having it. And I scored and then I just felt like I was unstoppable and I was just on top of the world, competent wise, and then scored the third goal and I was like, wow. After the game, like, I was doing interviews for like, all like, the news and that and I was thinking, wow, this is crazy. Like, never had nothing like this and then my phone was going and I've, it was like that for like a week later, two weeks later. Five minutes after the full time whistle, I remember having a conversation with, with Fraser, uh, my assistant manager, in the changing rooms after the game when we were celebrating, saying like he's, he's definitely gone. He was on our radar, and I think and after the appearance at Wembley, of course, then there were a number of clubs who started to look at him in terms of bringing him through, because you know if you score goals, everybody knows about you. Uh, so I think it was a combination of the fact that a, he was in a team that was, that was, that was upwardly mobile, and B, he was a striker. There was rumours at first about this, like, before I, I had offers of other teams, but there was rumours about this, and I was just thinking, I just wish the Tammy one was through. Like, I just wish that one was through, and then once I found out by my agent that it could come possible, I was like, yeah, like, get it done straight away, like, I'll sign no matter what, and we got it done, and I was, I was over the moon, you know. Elliot signed a one-year deal with Tranmere, the closest Skybet EFL team to his home in Liverpool, as he embarked on his professional career. Sorry to interrupt the video, guys. Just quick one, really, really quick one. If you haven't subscribed to the League of 72 and you're enjoying this video, you're missing out. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the best of EFL content. Enjoy the video. Sorry I interrupted. I think he saw that this was a place where he, he could probably develop himself. And one of the things for, for players as well, especially when they're developing, is that they, they need to have a stable home life. So, you know, for, for Scousers who populate the game all over the place, it's actually quite nice for them to be able to be here. And, you know, Liverpool's 10 minutes away. If I was away and away and playing and I was on my own, like, my mum would be going crazy and I would be like, probably be a bit depressed to be fair, but. Here at home, I can go home, switch off a little bit with my family and my friends and then come back in the day later and just go again. It's every kid's dream to play football. Elliot's not a kid, Elliot's 25. Elliot's your mate at the pub who's got the, you know, got the crack of the whip. So, 
He was a bit unique in the fact that he was part-time and he had a job. Um, he was about as non-league as you could get. I can imagine him hitting him like a ton of bricks. The first day I come in, I had to come in early to sign and it must have been about 8 o'clock and Peter Clark was already in I and mean, they don't start till 10. So that, that was like a big eye-opener for me, like you have to put in the work and there's no shortcuts or nothing like that. If, if I said that, that, that we'd go there easy, I would be lying. He took a lot of pushing and a lot of prodding. And he had to understand that in order to give himself a chance of, of being a football league player, these were the things that you have to be able to do and one was fitness and looking after his, his, himself. He came in good nick, but he just didn't arrive in football specific condition for what we were at our level. Playing Sunday League, it's a culture. I play Sunday League, so, you know, being in the culture, you don't want to be seen as, as that guy who's going to start, you know, making your own rice and fish in the microwave. You want to be going to the pub with your mates and chinning four cans of Guinness and all the rest of it. So, you know, he's had to break away rapid from a completely different culture into our culture. Oh my God, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Like, I was speaking to a few people who's been like pros before and he was like, the third time pre season the hardest one. And I was like, don't, don't say that. So I was running and I was training, trying to like be fit to come in. And then the first day I come in, I was like, oh my God, I'm miles of it. Like I was miles of it. We said he was about a stone overweight, which is a lot for a footballer. He had no education, so he had no idea what to eat. He was probably smiley faces and beans and turkey drummers, and probably thought that's, that's what I need to be eating. And I was 94 kg when I spoke to Hodgie, and he was like, um, do you think you could get down to 88? And I was like, yeah. He was like, because I know that's your natural weight, but if you're going to be training every day, you should prefer to be a bit lighter. And then I was like, sand, um, and now I'm 80 kg. So I've lost 14 kg, and I feel like the best I've ever felt now. Uh, from a department, it's a huge success, probably one of my biggest transformations I've certainly seen. But a big chunk of that has to come from the player, because while we'll give him all the tools and support, he has to go and do it himself. And I'm just committed. Like, even when we're off, I go to the gym, just try and be like the best I can be, because I know it's. Um, I've been given like a good opportunity here, so I don't really want to waste it and I want to see what I can become. And it wouldn't take him long at all to get on the score sheet, grabbing his first goal as a professional on his debut against Oldham Athletic in the Carabao Cup. Not only did he become Rovers' leading goal scorer, his performances earned him the club's Player of the Season award and a contract extension. I think he's doing well, I think he's doing brilliant. I, if I'm being honest on this, you know, told him this to his face, I think he's done miles better than I thought. thought it'd take him a bit of time to adapt and get used to it, but he's doing the business, isn't he? Leading goal scorer. He, he's definitely one of the ones that we, we, we look to in order for us to get results. That, that, there's no doubt about that. I think every lad in Liverpool, from the day they can kick a ball, wants to do that, don't they? You want to go to the top, see how far you can get. Individually, I'm over the moon. Like I never would have thought that any of this would have happened. And coming here, I probably was expecting to be going on loan. Like to be true, like, and I must have proved so many people wrong. But looking back, like I can, I can not be proud of what I've done. I've worked so hard all my life to be this, and I'm here. So, and I'm. Just going to get better. He's a great lad and couldn't have happened to a better person. He worked hard for it and got his rewards. And little motivation for other lads who are still playing Sunday League football. It's never over. Believe in yourself, you'll get there. You want it bad enough.